Welcome back. In this episode, we'll be talking about vertex painting, specifically within the context of architectural visualization. So uh, in this environment here, we're in a tavern that I'm making for a game right now for a VR project. And uh, I wanted to spice things up a little bit with some vertex painting. So I like this wall, for example. I like the, the grunginess, the old timey, you know, shine that we have on there. But I wanted to get some of that grunge in the corners. I was thinking maybe like bake it into the ambient occlusion or something, but I wanted to get like these these extra grungy corners uh yeah you can see it better here like someone someone who maybe works in this tavern they want to get up there they want to clean it but there's just no way you don't have a ladder you can't get in those corners or let's look at let's look at these windows uh i wanted to get like some of that frosty sort of dusty old look in those corners that you just can't clean because windex just doesn't exist quite yet so uh it's fun to fun to make make these decisions for your people and games sometimes. So, how, how do you go about doing that? Let's uh, let's talk about a more simple application where you might be might be painting on like a puddle onto a floor. That's a that's a pretty common thing. So, vertex painting. Uh, as you can imagine, relies upon having a large amount of vertices for your object. So, uh, if we go up here, let's go to show and let's go down to advanced and then uh, where is it? Uh, large vertices and select that. So when I have this object selected, we're seeing uh, all of those vertices that I have on that object. I kept these fairly low poly, the window, I made high poly so I could get some of that painting in there. Uh, we can't paint on this table surface because it's just a, just a few vertices for the top. Uh, let's unhide this. This is a, a, just a long cube I made, the same material as this floor here but you can see it has a lot of vertices. So we'll use that. Um, that's just for you guys. Uh, let's go back to advanced and turn off our large vertices because we know this has a lot to work with. So here we go. So let's uh, double click the material we have here. This uh, came from some texture content pack at one point. It's uh, all these textures are from photo scans. So um, you can see this diffuse texture has all this grunge, all these super nice scratches. It looks really good all these planks i love it this is so cool uh, they gave us uh, diffuse me uh, metallic which is obviously just black because it is not metal uh, roughness which is this uh, white to black uh, you, you get some more roughness variation just so nice the normal values and then displacement and ambient occlusion uh, added a little bit of tessellation just to help with the displacement as well so uh to make a puddle on this wood. Let's imagine that some angry patron, <laughs> hello AI, you you can just go away. Uh, some angry patron came in here with a hose and he just started hosing down the floor like some real a-hole. No reason, just uh, that's not our problem. We just gotta make the floor look that way. So what are we gonna do? Maybe, maybe this is more applicable for like concrete or asphalt or uh, some sort of exterior dirt, mud puddle, what have you. Uh, so we'll, we'll uh, We'll make that happen. So, as you can imagine, uh, let's let's move these bad lines out of the way. Uh, when it comes to roughness, uh, white is our one value, which is 100% rough. Zero is 0% rough, which is entirely smooth. So, if we unplug our roughness and then let's plug in a uh, roughness constant value and let's make this zero. Plug that in here move it to my other screen and save, and we'll see what will apply here. So with that white-ish texture, uh, every pixel there was, was saying that it is mostly 100% rough. Those black parts are saying, and those parts make it less rough. So when we make this zero rough, you can imagine it's going to be very shiny, very smooth. Uh, this bumpiness we have is because of that displacement and the normal map that we had applied. Um, so it almost looks like it's covered with a thin sheen of grease, which is absolutely disgusting. And now I'm going to scale up that roughness parameter from 0 up to 1. And you can see exactly what's happening, right? So uh, here it is shiny. Here it is at the 1 value. And it's uh, night and day, right? So let's... Um, let's adjust that for ourselves in such a way that we can make this happen. So let's drag out from our roughness first and let's type in linear interpolate. And if you follow it along in the uh, UE4 ArcViz series that I did, you know that uh, here in this lerp, it's giving us a point A and a point B. Uh, let's, let's say point A here, <laughs> point B here. And uh, for every pixel along this, uh, this texture uh, for the material, it's, it's looking at alpha and saying that's how much 
roughness to use. So if we were to uh, plug this into our alpha, uh, we would be saying every, every pixel along this texture is going to look for the white and black and then map it to these values, so 0 and 1 by default. But that's not uh, what we're going to do quite yet. So let's, uh, let's plug in our uh, red value here so we get a single channel to our B. And then let's uh, make this a uh, let's let's make this a constant zero value for now. And here's the trick. So we're gonna drag out from alpha and let's type it search uh, vertex color. And let's plug this into the red channel. So we just have the one channel coming in. Move this to my other screen and let's hit save. And we're applying here. This takes a moment because I'm using OBS and my screen is freezing up. Oh. Here we go. I'm so excited to see what happens. Come on, Unreal. Okay, so nothing happened. Why did nothing happen? Good question. Uh, so if we go up to our Paint tab, uh, we go to our Colors tab by default. We can do weights, we can do textures, but we're just sticking with colors for now. Uh, we have not painted anything on here yet, so it is still referring to our red because it is 100% uh, white for each vertex. Uh, let's let's explain what that means. If we if we uh, just skip down here to our view mode, color view mode is off by default. Let's go to RGB channels. This is showing all of those vertices that we had for this selected object. You see that I don't know if you can tell very well on YouTube. That's not helping. Uh, they are all white right now, uh, so they are 100% red, 100 green, 100 blue. Let's go back to off. Uh, we we just want the red to determine uh, this roughness here. So we're going to go ahead, uncheck green, blue, and alpha. So we're just worrying about the red right now. And let's turn our radius, let's turn this to 20. Yeah, let's make a strength, let's make this 0.1. And the fall off, let's keep that 0.5 for now. Great, and as we move along here, you see all those vertices showing up. Uh, that's indicating we have a very high vertex object. If you drag over other objects, you don't get that because you guessed it, you're selecting this one object. And then you also get uh, those two attenuation circles and then you're indicating the local normal as well, which can actually be very handy if you're doing things with smoothing and roughness and messing with some bull honky from SketchUp, <laughs> but I digress. Uh, so now if we have the selector, we're just going to left click and drag and I'm holding shift and uh, what I'm doing is I'm uh, by holding shift you're actually erasing so we're erasing that red channel to get back to the zero and you can see we're actually removing the roughness right that's pretty cool huh and since we're at strength of 0.1 it's happening very slowly if we make it one it'll happen just like as one large splotch but we want to keep it smooth right puddles are tend to be very smooth along the edges uh, now if we go back to our color view mode, go to RGB channel, you'll see that those uh, vertices we just painted on do not have the red. They're that tealish color, which is just green and blue without the red. So uh, let's, let's take this to the next step then, huh? So uh, time constraints be damned. Let's make this look good. So uh, we, have, we have this roughness that is being mapped now, but if you had a puddle sitting in the middle of this floor, uh, you'd have some other things as well. Maybe it would be darker. Let's, uh, let's come back to that, but for sure you wouldn't have this bumpiness on there. It almost looks like you have a puddle of grease on there, which is so gross. <laughs> so what we're going to do, let's go back to our material that we had here. Uh, we're going to, let's, uh, let's, let's take our normal and let's, uh, let's do the same thing. Let's drag out from our normal parameter, type in linear interpolate, there we go. And we want this to be the same as this that we had. So we're gonna drag our red into the B, and we're gonna drag this red from the vertex color into our alpha. And uh, let's, let's, let's make this zero. Mm. No, let's, let's do this right. <laughs> uh, default, um, default normals, I believe are zero, zero, one. We might need to adjust that here in a moment. But if, uh, so, okay. So what we're saying here is uh, where we are having red is this uh, default normal texture. And this is applying a lot of height. You see the striations and the wood and the cracks there. But uh, where we have painted on, uh, excuse me, removed the red, we want it to be solid with this blue here. So I'm gonna uh, save that and uh, it's gonna apply on my other screen. Take a moment here. How's your day going? Good, I hope. This is a lot of fun. 
I hope you're enjoying this. Let's uh, <laughs> let's see how this looks. I bet it's gonna look smooth along here, and we're gonna get a nice gradient along the whole oh boy. That ain't right. <laughs> okay, what did we do? Do. So you see, uh, we did get rid of the bumpiness on the wood, but we also fucked with the uh, bumpiness not on the wood here. This is what happens when you when you mess with the normal the way you shouldn't. So you see, uh, we're linear interpolating between this value and this value, but we forgot we just took the red value from this normal, which if we, if we look, uh, uncheck the green and blue, this is what we're telling that normal to be, just black and white, so... I done goofed right there, uh, so let's, uh, I'm going to left control and left click and move that to the uh, top pin here, and we'll, we'll be able to fix that. Let's get that normal back to a normal, if you will. All right, so as this saves, we're going to still get that nice smooth gradient along the edges, but we're going to get that nice wood texture on the edge again, and we're going to get this uh, nice smooth puddle here. Ah, oh, that's perfect. So uh, next, next, what would, what what could we do? Let's um, let's let's take a look. Uh, this might be a little bit too shiny. What you might want to do is add some sort of like rippling waves, maybe with like a normal that's on a panner sort of thing. Uh, what we could do for now, let's just make it a little bit darker where we add the um, where we add that uh, vertex color. So let's uh, let's do one more thing. Let's uh, base color out. Let's linear. Nice English Einstein. Pull out of there, and uh, we drag this into the B. And uh, let's drag this red into the alpha one more time. And let's uh, let's take our texture, and we're just going to multiply this by a uh, 0.6. So for each pixel along this texture, we're multiplying that value, that red, green, blue alpha value by 0.6. So uh, it's going to be darker for each individual pixel, uh, but not in uniform. It's going to do that uh, given the texture of what's under it. So we're, we're saying uh, go from this to that darker variation of it. 0.6 might be a bit aggressive, but let's take a look. So uh, it, it does look darker. Um, what, what, what we can do here, let's uh, call this just scalar because I don't know what else to call it. I'm going to make it 0 to 1, and by default, it's going to be 0 0.6. Plug this into our multiply, move it back here, and hit save. It's going to reapply here. So now we'll be able to just scrub that parameter and see it in real time. Oh, come on, Unreal. And here we go. Okay, so uh, I'm just scrubbing that texture now. You can see if it's down to a uh, down to zero, it's going to be pitch black. It's like someone spilled ink <laughs> on the uh, on the floor. It looks just gross. But if we get up to one, it's going to look the exact same color, uh, give or take the roughness value here. So um, if we went higher than one, it would obviously make it brighter. So maybe you spilled some sort of like bioluminescent thing. On the, on the ground there, but uh, maybe if you if you had like something that was sitting there for a long time, this wood would look a little bit more deteriorated. So you might want to keep that default above one. If you're doing concrete, you might want to keep this maybe closer to 0 0.8, 0 0.85, just make it a little bit darker, but you don't want it to look like it's uh, ink on the ground. One more thing we can do here, uh, you, you see these reflections kind of look bad. This is reflecting, I believe there's a light, yep, right up here. Uh, I, I'm, I'm not a big fan of that. Uh, if you're adding puddles, what you'd want to do is take this sphere reflection here, and you'd want to add it above each puddle. And let's make the attenuation radi radius much smaller. Let's make it 50 so you can see. And if we move that down, it should uh, update... Let's build our reflections. Uh, it should update um, to show a much, much cleaner uh, reflection here. So you can see we're actually getting that uh, 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 object in the reflection now and it looks much smoother. So 
Uh, again, this is uh, this isn't the exact use case where you would use this. You'd probably use this on more of like an exterior object, but it almost looks like uh, here. I mean, with the gradients and the light, like someone actually spilled something and it was deforming and causing this uh, surface tension along the object. So, I hope this helped. Uh, let me know what other topics you would like me to cover specifically for architectural visualization. I would love to help out. Uh, let me know. Leave me a comment down below, and thank you.